All right, so to begin coding, we have to set up our server environment, our development environment. Okay, so the steps I'm going to show you here uh, are tailored to a Windows system. So if you're not running Windows, just ignore the steps that I will take up to the point where I begin uh, typing the HTML. So from here to the HTML part, if you're not running Windows, you can ignore that part because the steps might not work the same way. Okay, so if you are not running Windows, just go to your htdocs folder, make sure that your server is running. In my case, this is ZAMP or whatever you are running, could be MAMP or LAMP. Just make sure that you find your www folder or your server folder and create a folder they are called slider that's it so but if you're running windows i can show you some other ways to do this i want us to create an environment for development from scratch instead of using zamp so just make sure that uh, apache is turned off and mysql is turned off as well okay once you're done, close that. And we're not going to be using the htdocs folder. So the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you a way to have a portable version of your uh, development environment because currently you are stuck to the htdocs folder here. So if you don't put your folder in here, then PHP will not run. But I want to show you a way that you can do it without having to rely on this folder. So you can put it you can put your folder anywhere on your desktop as long as it's on a computer even on your flash drive it's going to work okay so to begin that what we will need is a few things so we're going to need font awesome of course so this you can download whether you're using windows or not just download font awesome because we'll be using some of these icons specifically these ones here okay so get the desktop version, which has the SVG files, start for free and get the desktop version. And then go to uh, pexels.com and get a few photos there. But in case you cannot get these photos for some reason, I already have the link in the description to a zip file that has the photos we'll be using, but I got them from here. And then go to sqlitebrowser.org because I want us to use SQLite as our database. So download this browser and then go to php.net, click on Windows Download and then download PHP. So once you click there, you come here and just choose the right version. I'm using uh, PHP 7.4. You can use any version you want and then download the thread safe version this one so get the zip folder there and what else do we need now if your pc is new and you haven't installed a lot of software there you may need to install the visual c download here uh, this visual c redistributable for visual studio it's a very small file about 15 megabytes so you can download this when you click here latest version uh, don't get the 2015 get the latest version it would bring you to this page and on this page you can get either the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version depending on your system or you can just get both because they're very small files now the, re the way you would know that you need these files is when we start running some php command line uh, sequences it will not run it will tell you there's a missing file or something like that if it tells you there's a missing file then you need to install these two things either of these two depending on your system okay otherwise normally you don't need this if you have other software installed already on your system they usually come with this so you may not need that but just in case you can download so once you finish all the downloads you have in your folder you have this so this is what we need so we have our php which is the main thing that we need and then we have this for our database and then we have these two just in case our system doesn't have the uh, php actually uses these to compile uh it's it's code to compile uh to change from php to c 
to machine code. So it uses these as the compilers. So that's why you may need these. So once we are done with this, let's go to our desktop now. We're going to be running PHP from our desktop. Once you get to your desktop, just uh, create a folder called slider and then you put your images there. So I have this folder called files where I have the images we'll be using in there. So that's all we need for now. And then extract your PHP here. So I'm going to extract to the PHP folder. Very good. Once you've extracted, rename the folder to just PHP for easy access. And then let's cut it from here and let's paste it where we need it in our folder right there. Okay. So once we do this, we are ready to begin our PHP journey. Let me come back here and see. Okay, that's it. So this is all we need for now. Now in here, I'm going to create a PHP file so that we see that uh, things can actually work here. So I'm going to go to my text editor, Sublime Text, click on File, New File, hit Save. So now I will go to my desktop and inside Slider, I will save index.php. Okay, so let's add some PHP tags here. Sorry there. And let's do an echo and say, um, PHP is running something like this and hit save. Okay. So this is what we've got. Now, if I try to drag this into my browser, let me go to this empty space here. So let me drag this into my browser. Uh, oop, refresh, uh, nothing happens here. So showing that uh, we are not, the server is not actually working. So if I try now to remove everything here except the index to slash index.php and put our local host like that, local host, so that we can run a server here. If I hit enter, you will see that it's going to tell me that uh, it's unable to connect. Ooh. All right, so it's saying, unable to connect as predicted because there's no server that's running. But if I were to run Apache right now and start it, I will, it will still fail because Apache is expecting our folder to be inside the htdocs folder. So what we do now is we are going to run the native PHP server because PHP comes with a very basic server. So this server is a single thread server, meaning that it only processes one user request at a time so it is not to be used for uh once you deploy your website it's only to use if your website is accommodating one user at a time so things like a point of sale uh, that's one user interface so you can use this server for such a thing okay and for development of course for testing and all that stuff okay so to open this server what we need to do is Open the command prompt, cmd, command prompt, there we go. Now, the thing is, I need to navigate to this folder here. So I can do that by just copying uh, the path to my folder there in the uh, address bar and saying cd, change directory, slash d, and then I'll paste my path. And just like that, I have gone to my current folder. Now there's a shortcut in Windows to do that. Just hold down shift, right click in the folder and click open command window here. So once you do this, it will automatically come to this particular folder there. So you don't have to do that other extra stuff. Okay, so while we're in here, I want us to read from the PHP file that's in this inside this folder. So to do that, we're going to say PHP slash because Remember that we are in this particular folder, so we have to go into that folder. And then I will say php.exe. Now, the reason we're typing that is because there's actually a php.exe file in there. So this is the command line interface for PHP. You can use this to run PHP files. So 
if for example i get this php file right there i will just make a copy of this okay just for demonstrative purposes i will paste it in here right inside the php folder because i want to run it now remember that what's inside that php is this php is running right so let's try and run this file from the command line so what i would do is once i do that i just say index.php and press enter so you will see that the result is php is running so it has run this file and executed it to get this result now if for some reason this doesn't run and it tells you there's some files missing etc etc this is when you are going to need these guys here so if you have a 64-bit version of windows install this or if you have 32-bit version install the other one after you install that then you have a compiler and everything will run smoothly okay so now that we've seen that we can run our php files from here we can delete this php file we don't need it what we want to do is use that command line interface to create a server okay so how do we do that easy peasy so we go and read from the php file again by saying php going into the php folder then php.exe and then to do this you say dash s capital s i don't know whether it's case sensitive or not you can test it on your own i'll say localhost full colon and i'll say 8000 now how did i know how to type this well if you go to php.net just search here for server and it will show you the built-in server you can read all about it it's right there but the gist of the story here is i'm running the php uh, command line interface here of course and then you have to use dash s to tell it that you want to run a server at this location so localhost of course is required and i think maybe you can call it whatever you want i'm not really sure but then this full colon and the number here is the port number where it will be listening for incoming uh, signals so this number here can be any number you can put one two whatever number you want here really uh, it's going to work so 8000 was just a random number I, I thought of so yeah so once you 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 are done with that just hit enter and uh, it should tell you that the oh enter okay there we go so it's going to tell you that uh, development server was started at this location so let's try and uh, find that location right here so we're already on localhost if i refresh um, it's still going to tell me that uh, unable to connect right but if i tell it to listen to a very specific port it's going to get there so here that's what i will do i will put a full colon here and say 8000 like so so by specifying the localhost full colon 8000 i'm telling it exactly what port to listen to so let's see here uh 8000 localhost 8000 okay everything seems fine but uh, it seems to be reading continuously without end So I don't know why that is. Let me stop that and let me try again. Oh, my bad. I put the HTTPS there. So, so this is uh, one problem with this uh, development uh, server because once a a request is blocked, it hangs. It doesn't really give you a response or anything. So it would have been loading to infinity there. So this is why it's not good for production for deployment. So let's hit there so make sure it's not https 8000 okay it seems the port 8000 may be too big so let's close this let's come back here let's try a different port number shall we let's try something like 1000 so say php slash php dot exe s 
localhost full colon 1000. So the server was started. So let's come back here and let's see if we can use 1000. Okay, so it's saying secure connection failed. Let's remove the S on the HTTPS. And there we go. So it's saying PHP is running. Congratulations. If you see that, it means your page is running.